Welcome back to LearnBiology.net, I'm Frankie and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the effect of pH on enzyme activity. Okay, let's get started. Your learning outcomes this lesson are Number 1. Understand that enzymes are affected by changes in pH. Number 2. Know the optimal pH levels for some frequently discussed enzymes. And number 3. Explain how a change in pH affects enzyme activity. The effect of pH on enzyme activity. Enzymes have optimal temperatures, the temperature at which they work best. They also have optimal pH levels, the appropriate level of acidity, neutrality or alkalinity at which the enzyme functions best. However, go beyond the optimal pH range for any given enzyme and it will denature. And just as with temperature, it's all about how the pH affects the bonds holding it together. On the whole, our enzymes have an optimum of approximately pH 7 neutral. For example, the enzyme salivary amylase, which is secreted into your mouth as you chew your food and its job is to begin the breakdown of carbohydrate and its optimum pH is 7. So a pH too far above or below this will denature it. Now as we swallow our food along with the amylase, it winds up in our stomach with its pH of our own two. The super acidic environment denatures the amylase and carbohydrate digestion stops. The hydrochloric acid has caused the ionic and hydrogen bonds to get disrupted, eventually breaking and the enzyme loses its three-dimensional conformational shape as it unfolds, permanently denatured. But here, in this harsh and extreme sea of hydrochloric acid, another enzyme is perfectly at home. The enzyme is pepsin, a protein digesting enzyme which has an optimal pH of approximately 2. But once more, as the mixed up content of food, acid, gastric juices etc is released into the small intestine, this acidic sea, or more accurately chyme, is quickly neutralised. A change in environmental conditions, a change in pH. And now that the pH surround pH 8, slightly alkali, and of course not suitable for the acid loving pepsin which now denatures, its ionic and hydrogen bonds disrupted, broken, beyond return. Not all is lost for our carbohydrate or protein digestion though, as now in this slightly alkali environment, trypsin is secreted, continuing the hydrolysis of those partially digested polypeptides. And as we move further into the small intestine, pH conditions change again, back to a more favourable pH 7, and pancreatic amylase continues the digestion of some carbohydrates. All in all, enzymes are affected by the intracellular and extracellular environment, and despite the optimal ranges for our enzyme activity falling between 6 and 8, there are exceptions, as we have seen with pepsin, the protein digesting enzyme in the stomach. In this first graph, we see the enzyme amylase, with its optimum pH of 7, shown on the graph at point A. At point B, the enzyme has denatured due to the increasingly acidic conditions as the pH levels lower, causing the ionic and hydrogen bonds to disrupt and break. Point C also shows that the enzyme is denatured, this time as pH levels increase and the alkalinity of the environment causes disruptions to the ionic and hydrogen bonds holding the tertiary structure of the enzyme together. This graph shows the optimum pH level levels for three different enzymes, typically discussed at A level. Firstly, we have pepsin, with an optimal pH of approximately 2. Notice that as the acidity increases, pH levels lower, and as the pH levels increase, alkalinity increases. The enzyme denatures. The same is true for both amylase and trypsin. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this lesson on how pH affects enzyme activity. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at how concentration of substrate and concentration of enzyme can affect overall enzyme activity. So until then, take it easy.